Not everyone is convinced that a green future is possible without a complete overhaul of the global economy. One of those is Dr Jason Hickel, an economic anthropologist and visiting senior fellow at the International Inequalities Institute of the London School of Economics. And uh, he joins me now. Uh, Jason, the World Economic Forum suggests uh, a greener approach to commerce could add, they say, $10 trillion to global GDP. Can growth be as green as that, do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's a confused claim, actually. <laughs> um, there's no empirical evidence to, uh, to indicate that, that green growth is possible in the way that some major international institutions are suggesting. Um, now, they're not trained in physical sciences, and, uh, uh, but the physical science research on this is, is quite compelling, and there's a, there's a consensus on this now. Um, look, we know that we can decouple GDP from emissions. That much is not in question, OK? It's possible to have rising GDP while at the same time a reduction in emissions. The question is, can we do that quickly enough to, stay, to get emissions to zero fast enough to stay within carbon budgets for 1.5 or 2 degrees, right? So we know that, according to the inter, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we have to um, get emissions globally to zero by 2050. Now, in high-income nations, it's much more difficult than that because, um, given the principle of differentiated responsibility, countries that have con um, contributed most to historical emissions um, have to reduce emissions to zero faster than those who have contributed less. So for high-income nations, according to scientists at the Stockholm Environment Institute, they need to be getting to zero by about 2035 or 2030, right? So that's a really tight time frame. Now, the difficulty with growth is that the more you grow, the more energy your economy requires. And the more energy re your economy requires, the more difficult it is to supply that energy with renewable alternatives, right? So that, this is what's happening right now is that um, we're, we're pumping out tons of new renewable energy, but it's all being swamped by additional energy demands due to growth. So the, the key principle here in the physical sciences is that the less energy your economy requires, the easier it is to transition to renewables in a very short period of time. Some of those arguments are built in to the institutions who are saying green growth is in fact possible. And I'm not talking just about the World Economic Forum. I'm also talking about the UN as well. The Environment Programme at the UN is saying, yes, this is all quite feasible. And they've also built in... Uh, your argument that you would need more energy by saying, in fact, you could utilize greater natural energy, solar energy, wind energy. Yes, we absolutely can create a green economy that has, that has higher employment, um, right, and that delivers flourishing lives for all. That's essential. The key point I'm trying to point out here is that we have to switch from an economy that is dependent on perpetual expansion to an economy that can operate in a steady state with the living world, right? And this is the key thing, is that the, uh, the economic system we have right now is one that requires growth at a rate of 3% per year. Now, that doesn't sound like very much. We're used to hearing that. It sounds like small increments. But 3% growth per year means doubling the size of the, of the economy about every 23 years. Um, so you double it in 23 years, and then you quadruple it in the next 23 years, and then multiply it by a factor of eight in the next 23 years, and so on. I mean, it very quickly gets out of hand. Now, and the key, the key thing to realize here is that we don't need that kind of GDP growth. That doesn't benefit people. It causes ecological harms, and it doesn't really benefit people. And the reason it doesn't is because um, of the maldistribution of the yields of growth. Right now, the richest 5% of people in the world capture nearly half of total GDP per year. So think about that. That means half of all of the labor that we do, half of all of the emissions that we emit, half of all of the resources that we extract and produce and consume is done in order to make rich people richer. So the key uh, principle here is that we can accomplish our social goals and deliver flourishing lives for all by sharing what we already have more fairly rather than continuing to plunder the earth for more. And I think that's the key thing here is that in high income nations, you know, like the USA, like, uh, like Britain, more GDP growth is not necessary to deliver our social objectives. So this is an opportunity then, you think, at the moment, because the world economy is not growing and the country's economies are in fact in recession. There's no growth. Well, what we have to realize is that what's happening right now is a recession. And uh, recessions are bad because recessions are what happens when growth dependent economies stop growing and it causes all sorts of social and financial disaster. And that's what we're, we're seeing right now. The lives of the poor are being hit hardest right now. Um, and that's because our economy is organized around growth. 
like it, it can't deliver livelihoods to people without perpetual growth. So what we need to do is organize an economy, a different kind of economy, one that can deliver good livelihoods to people without necessarily needing perpetual growth. Um, and I think that this, this crisis creates an opportunity for us to think about that. I think that what people realize in the wake of this crisis is that what we want is we want an economy that is organized around human well-being and ecological stability rather than around elite accumulation. Um, so that's what we have to build, an economy that doesn't require growth um, in order to deliver uh, flourishing lives for all. Is it possible to have, as some are suggesting, a truly circular economy? I is that a dream or is that within reach, do you think? A circular economy is something that we can achieve, but, um, but in my research, what I've, what I've uh, pointed out with empirical evidence is that it's not possible to achieve it while growing the economy at the same time. Okay, so, so here again, growth uh, comes in con in, into conflict with our ecological objectives and our new economic objectives. Okay, so, um, so the demand for perpetual growth means that capital has a need to cheapen uh, resources. It has to find cheaper resources uh, in order to, to fuel that need for surplus accumulation. In a growth-oriented economy, uh, then capital will avoid using recycled sources because they're too expensive. In a post-growth economy where you don't need that constant accumulation, then it's easier for you to shift towards recycled resources. So the more that we recycle, um, the, the, the more that we can abandon the objective of growth as a policy objective in our economies, the easier it is for us to switch towards a circular economy. Dr. Jason Hickel, economic anthropologist, many thanks indeed for joining us on the agenda. Thanks for having me.